Hey everyone, this is Anna Runyon, founder and CEO of Classy Career Girl, where we are on a mission to help women find career fulfillment. Today, I have a, such a great guest I am excited to introduce you to. Whitney Harrington is a seasoned leader with over 10 years of human resources experience. She recently launched her first tech company called Kith Republic, a mobile platform that connects women with HR experts to help them solve their work-related issues. So welcome, Whitney, and thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. We're going to be talking all about solving work-related issues, and I know with the COVID-19 pandemic, there's a lot of issues going on right now. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation with you today, Whitney. So can you start by sharing with us first, like how you got into HR and what inspired you to then start your own company? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, I think everyone who's been in HR comes from it in a lot of different ways, right? So there's not one clear uh, career path. And that was certainly true for me. Um, I started my career, I was a, I'm a numbers person at heart and I love, you know, I'm kind of an Excel nerd. And so I went into this world thinking that I was going to be this like financial genius and quickly realized that I, that wasn't for me. Um, and so I was able to pivot my skill sets for uh, analytical into a, a part of HR called compensation. And that, and that's kind of the rest is history and just been able to evolve. Um, and so I moved, you know, through my career climbing the ladder into like leadership positions. And I quickly was able to see that, you know, there's, you know, employee relations is probably one of the most significant parts of an HR person's job. And, um, you know, oftentimes I, you're in a conflict, right? You're, you're trying to kind of balance the needs of the employee that's before you telling you what's going on, making sure they're feeling good at work. Uh, with the employers. And I found that too often that conflict of interest let, made me lean towards the employer rather being able to advocate for the employee. Um, so I wanted to create a space where people could have, um, you know, an HR expert on their side, right, that is leaning more towards them um, to give them the nitty gritty of what they need to know to resolve their issues. And so I wanted to bring a space that was safe and confidential and helpful, um, but also real. Um, and, and those are spaces that I love to be in and I get to be on those things with my friends and family, um, but not too often when I'm working within a workplace. And so I wanted to create a place where everyone could have a Whitney that they could come and run yeah. past, you know, things past. So we all know, need I mean, an HR expert in our corner. I <laughs> yeah. feel like that's why it caught my eye when I saw what you were doing. Awesome. So do you, you know, what do you see right now with the pandemic? I feel like it's creating a lot of new issues, especially with women um, in the workplace. Are there any tips you can share for women who are struggling to, you know, make this their new normal? Well, you know, so one is we have to take a moment just to acknowledge that like this is a really hard time, right? And and we are not alone that lots of people and particularly women, right? Just as you mentioned, are going through this issue. So I think there's, there's first kind of just a step in acknowledgement that like you're doing the best that you can under the circumstances. And I think we have to give ourselves credit, which women typically don't do. We're particularly really hard on ourselves about what we're not being able to manage and not really focusing on what we are, right? So I think that's one. Um, Two, I think that we have to be really upfront and realistic about what we can and cannot do, right? And um, I think increasingly in the age of COVID-19 and quarantining, um, you know, I think that, that, that those boundary settings have been really marred and it's really hard um, to say like, when am I work time? When am I mom? When am I, you know, wife or partner, right? And so it's important to be able to just kind of set those boundaries um, and be explicit up front with your employer, with your partner, with your, you know, your family about what can happen and what can't. Um, and just, at, you know, ask for help in helping to set those priorities. Um, and I think it will take a lot of stress off women who are going do, dealing with a lot, particularly, you know, while they're trying to work as well. Yes, I definitely set some new boundaries at the beginning of this year. I was like, yeah, some things weren't working last year. Like we need to change some things around. Oh, yeah. 
So yeah. And it's, it's putting, it's, it's giving yourself the ability to be able to do that too, to set those boundaries for yourself. Definitely. You got to give yourself permission, right. To just kind of lead your day and your world the way you need to, to survive, honestly. Right. And that might seem a little extreme, but this is a lot for people. Um, And so you got to give yourself that permission. So what, what kind of, when you're working in HR, what kind of questions are you getting that might, that, that we should know about, right? Like you're, you've been behind the scenes, you kind of know, know what happens. Is there like, what, what questions are you getting? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think one of the things that I I think a lot of my HR colleagues joke about is that probably, you know, 99% of the HR issues that we have happen with someone's supervisor. (laughs) Um, And we have some pretty, um, you know, not so great bosses out there, right? Um, And people who have never been trained to be a manager who have just kind of risen and grown through the ranks. And so that that type of situation is ripe for issues, right? And so I oftentimes have people come to me about just challenges with working with a boss that might be micromanaging them, um, a boss that they think they're being treated unfairly or differently from their colleagues on the same team, um, misalignment on expectations of what the employee should be doing and what, you know, what the manager is expecting, um, performance issues, right? So all those things come up quite a bit. Um, And I think one of the things I try to help people understand and kind of navigating those challenges is that we, one, have to understand, like, what is really the root cause? And some of this is like really trying to understand your manager's perspective of what they want, whether it's right or wrong, right? But let's like get to a place that we can understand, like, what's really going on here? Like, why are they, why do we think they're acting like this? Why do we think that they're um, approaching us in this way? Um, And once we understand that, then coming up with strategies for how to counter that, right? Um, And I think a lot of times having someone that you can talk to and bounce ideas off of who have worked with lots of different folks, right? Lots of different leaders is a great way to do that in a way that you could do that through the Kith Republic app. Um, but also, right, just wanting to like sit down and have objective conversations. I think people get really scared to have that conversation and rightfully so, right? The power dynamics of you working with your boss who might not be the best boss to you, right, is really scary um, when it comes to our livelihood. But we need to, particularly as women, need to build that courage to have really upfront and frank conversations about our work environment, our culture, what we need, what doesn't work for us, right? And and bringing it bringing it from a solutions generative perspective, right? Like, okay, well, this isn't working for me. Can we try this, right? I need to understand more. Can you provide clarity? Um, and I think that it helps a lot when we just speak up and we say, hey, you know, let, let's talk about this. Let's try to resolve this issue rather than and, you know, kind of coming into the workplace with, you know, feeling dreadful about interacting with your boss or, you know, that kind of thing. I love that you said that that's one of the common challenges. I mean, I know in my prior corporate life, I definitely had challenges with my boss too. So putting that out there and telling everyone, if you have a challenge with your boss, you're not the only one. It's probably right. going to happen to everyone at some point. Yes, definitely, definitely. And there, you know, I've heard some crazy stories, right? And um, and so I imagine that there are people out there who are like, no one could ever think about what I'm dealing with. And I would bet you I've probably heard something similar to it, right? So there's a lot of challenges happening. And it's a greater conversation for, you know, the workplace as a whole to really get a hold of how they're developing their managers. Um, but unfortunately, we, we bear the brunt of it. Exactly. So how would you advise someone who's dealing with challenges? Like, um, uh, we, we can definitely talk about your app and I want, I want to hear all about it, sure. but if like, would you go to HR first or what, what, what would you advise someone to do? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a tricky question, right? Um, because depending on lots of different factors, right? Going to HR or going somewhere else could mean a lot of different things and have a lot of different implications. Um, So for instance, right? Like if you know, right? Oftentimes our employees know when they have a really good HR department and when they don't, right? So I never want to recommend you go someplace that is inherently hostile to what you know you're going to be going there for. Um, So generally, I think a couple things. So one is trying to I think it's important to try to find an objective but knowledgeable person to like kind of talk through what's happening. 
Um, sometimes this is our, you know, our colleagues in the workplace, right? Someone that we trust and we've built a relationship with who can, you know, it's not just kind of our friend who just has our back all the time, but someone who can give you kind of pushback and say, hey, well, what about this? Did you think about this, right? But really being able to bounce it off to someone and say, am I really thinking about this right? Am I missing something? Um, because that can go a long way towards, you know, avoiding further conflict. Because sometimes it's our, you know, we've just misinterpreted something or we have, um, we were you kind of for, for fortune telling that something is going to happen when that's not really the case. Um, so I think having someone to talk to, I think it's really important. The second piece is like coming up with a game plan for how you address it. I do think the best way, you know, we're adults, we're in the workplace is to try to do it head on one-on-one, -on -one, right? And so if you have the ability and you feel comfortable have a conversation. And I'll tell you that like when people actually kind of come with calmer heads, sit down one-on-one -on -one with someone, right? And just hash it out. We, so much gets resolved, right? Rather than first going to HR who, it just instantly escalates the situation. So where you feel safe, where it is comfortable for you just to have a conversation to say, hey, this is what's happening. I need support. I need help. I need this to change, right? It can go a long way. So I always try to recommend that where it is safe to do so. Um, and then if those things are not being resolved, like if you're unable to get a resolution from talking with a colleague about how to approach the situation or sitting down with the person that you're having a conflict with, then yes, I think going to HR is appropriate. Um, but people have to know the the right way to go to HR. And oftentimes it's very emotionally driven um, where HR, um, and one of the reasons why I created this app, right? HR is there to protect the company, right? They, that is their primary mandate. No one will tell you, you know, don't believe anything else, right? And so you have to know what they're thinking and what, they're, um, what, what they need out of the situation in order to make it work for you. So one of the first things they're going to ask you is how, you know, kind of what's happening and what evidence do you have, right? So we want to be thinking about that. What emails do we have that, that support um, the conflict that we're having, you know, we're having? Um, what situations have happened, right? Who was around, right? We want to make sure we have as much context and um, examples of the issue that is at hand. So it's hard to dispute, right? Um, and so those are the types of things that I think are important to get to once you get to HR, but I don't always recommend you go to HR first. Yeah. So, and then insert your company, <laughs> because I feel like that could be a good, like middle ground to see, exactly. like, should I go to HR or, or what, what exactly should I say to my boss if I'm having this problem too? So, you know, exactly. what, what resources are available to someone who's might be scared to talk to their boss or scared to go to HR that you have? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the Kids Republic and, and our mobile app, right, I, I feel like sits at the kind of in the middle of like talking to your friends um, and before you start talking to your employer, whether that's directly with the person you're engaged with and have some conflict with or with your HR person. So we're kind of sitting in the middle. And so we give you both that objective side, right, of kind of really understanding and listening to your situation. We don't have the outside influences of like kind of what's happening at your company. We're basing it off of what you're telling us, right? And we're going to ask questions that we're going to want to know, right? But we're, we're, we're experienced and we have the expertise expertise and understanding how HR works and how it work, functions within an organization, which is context that our friends and family don't typically have, right? And so we can say, yeah, like this, you know, based on the laws that I know about to be true about the situation, right? It may not rise to this occasion, but we can give you some, some suggestions for how you might navigate it in a different way. Um, and, and our goal is to advocate for you, is to empower you with knowledge and information and guidance that help you walk, walk away from the app and say, I can implement this in my real life and I feel good about it. And I, and, and when I do, right, it's going to be received in a much better manner had I not had the support of a Kith Republic HR coach. Yeah. Cause sometimes you can just get so stuck thinking, get overwhelming yourself and thinking you're just stuck in that situation. There's nowhere to get out to. So mm -hmm. I like this because like our whole focus here is career fulfillment, but if you have you know, a bad boss or an issue, issue at work, that's going to affect your career fulfillment. Cer certainly. You know? Right. Like, I mean, I think one of the misconceptions is you can be fulfilled and still have challenges at work and, and yes. we all do. Right. And so, um, you know, our goal is to try to minimize kind of that outside influence issues that are affecting your fulfillment. Right. And how can we support that? 
Um, and, and I think it makes a lot of sense, right? Because if you are fulfilled in work, right, you want to be able to do that without all these conflicts. And so we want to try to, to minimize that for you so that you can be thoroughly fulfilled, um, but also be able to navigate just the expected challenges that come up in any workplace where you're dealing with other humans. Um, and so it's just great to have a partner to help you go through that journey. Do you ever advise people to change their company then? Is that part of, or do you just help them within that company? Yeah, so we definitely, I mean, we look at all solutions and options, right? So, you know, there are certainly times when I've had to share with someone that it's probably time to, for them to, you know, leave that company um, because of all, you know, all the, the things that they've tried to do. I mean, we try to approach it with like, let's, you know, let's start with kind of a progressive type of approach to solutions. And so let's start with what you can control right now and having conversations. If that doesn't work, right, we go to HR, sometimes that doesn't work and they'll say, hey, right? There's not really any, you know, basis for anything more, you know, extravagant than what you've already done. And so you have to make a decision, right? Like, can you continue to deal with this, this environment, right? If it should not change. And if you can, then I say, Hey, continue to try to work on it internally. But if someone is really honest with themselves and says, no, I can't keep dealing with this, then that means it's time to go. Um, and that's okay. Right. And I think there's a lot of, there's benefits and, um, and a lot of value that comes with making a change, um, at the right time when it's right for you. I feel like you learn a lot from these experiences too, you know, like we're kind of trying to get you out of those experiences, but when you're there, remember, there's going to be like, you're going to learn so much from it. I know I have a lot of my experiences in the workplace. You learn a ton. I mean, I think one of my, um, when I first came out of college and my first job that I'd ever had, I um, faced significant challenges on the workplace that had to do with kind of discrimination and things like that. And when I look back on, you know, 21, 22 year old Whitney, right, there's a ton that I've learned that I would have dealt with that situation very differently, right? But it's, it's you're right. Like as you go on this journey, you're learning things and it doesn't always feel great in the moment about, you know, things you have to deal with and navigate through. Uh, but it makes you so much stronger. And so now, right, like it's not that I don't have these issues, right? I certainly have issues on the workplace, but I know how to handle them a little bit better. I know how to navigate. I know how to, you know, kind of set up my environment to avoid them, right? But it's taken a lot of time. And and I even have mentors and people that I talk to, right, who are experts more than I am, right? And so it just, you have to have kind of this this community of people who like support you that you can talk to as you navigate these things. And then you just have to keep learning and, and keep, going and women are the most resilient people on earth. So we definitely could do that. Yeah, we got this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of mentors and like, how do you, this is a question I always get from, from our audience is how do you find a mentor to support you? So it's really, that's a really great question. And I think it's a lot simpler than people uh, think it is, right? And so um, in my experience, a mentor comes from just a natural relationship that has developed, right? And so um, whether that is um, you've seen someone talk at a speech or even someone in your company that you, you know, run past the hallway and you heard about, you know, some of the work that they're doing, and you just start with kind of asking that person to lunch or having coffee or in the in today's world, right? Like doing a virtual happy hour or something yeah. with someone and just have 30 minutes and just talk, right? And, and don't talk about work, just get to know someone and say, hey, you know, I see what you're doing. I, you know, I'm inspired by the work, you know, how you're approaching your work. And I'd love just to learn a little bit more about you. And you'll be surprised how many people will say yes to that, right? And 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 I think what I had to learn in this process when I reach out to people is that people love talking about themselves. Like they really, really do. Um, so you can leverage that, right? And just give people the opportunity to tell them about, tell you about them and what they've been through. And naturally, right? Like I can have a good conversation for 30 minutes and I say, hey, like, you know, this was really great. I really appreciate you making the time. Do you mind if I check in with you in a couple of weeks just to see how things are going? Things come up for me and it would be nice to have someone to bounce ideas off. And every single time people are like, sure, I've never had someone say no. And then it just naturally progresses from there as you've had a couple conversations. So it doesn't have to be this big formal thing of like, I'm going to walk up to someone and say, they like, will you please be my mentor, right? Like it could just be something that naturally um, happens and evolves over time as you meet someone that you feel like has a lot of insights that you would really find, hold nice to them. And you just, you know, you reach out. Yeah, that's, I think that's what people are afraid of. They think it's like, will you be my mentor? You know, like <laughs> it has to be all formal, but my mentors were all 
just, it was natural. Like I never asked anyone, will you be my mentor either? It just, it just started like that. So yeah. And to your point too, about the networking, I think people are really missing like the connecting right now. And these like kind of one-on-one zoom sessions or phone calls, like my friend, um, wanted to call wanted to call, uh, chat with me the other day. and was like, yes, anytime, you know, cause it's just like, you're just craving, like we're with, you know, we're home all day. We're just craving that interaction. So now is a good time to jump on it. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, it definitely is a good time. I mean, I think I, um, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people in, in different industries every day through my work. And, um, you know, people are really in, people are welcoming those conversations. Because like you said, like, they're just trying to like, have a little bit of an escape from what they're dealing with day to day, day in and day out. Um, and so it's even better when you could just talk to them and just like on like some casual personal way rather than like work all the time, people will eat it up. So this is the perfect time to start those conversations. I love that. Yeah. Everyone thinks it's like a hard time to change your career or to advance your career, but if we can just think of it positively. I think we can do a lot of networking. So where can people find out more about you, your app online, Whitney? Certainly. Yeah. So, you know, we are live um, on all different platforms. So um, you could definitely check us out and learn more about us at kithrepublic.com. Um, and it's just how it sounds. K-I-T-H republic.com. Uh, same thing. At, we're on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn at Kith Republic. Um, and then our app, Kith Republic, is actually available on the Apple uh, App Store and also on the Google Play Store for you to come in. And it's just a quick, you know, you register and then you get connected, uh, you know, start a session and you'll get connected with an HR coach to help you with anything you may be dealing with at work. Awesome. So one final question, and you all, you kind of hinted at it already because you were talking about like 21 year old Whitney, but what is one thing you wish you would have known, you know, when you were starting in your career? Oh man, that's a good one. It's a tough one though. Um, you know, I, uh, one of the things that resonates with me when you, when you asked me this question is I, um, I think it was in, in Michelle Obama's, uh, documentary, her movie. Uh, and I think it may have been in her book as well. She talked about how she's been in the room with a lot of different, particularly like white men, um, who haven't been that impressive, right? And it's so true, right? And so I think that we put ourselves in this place where we have like imposter syndrome and we're thinking that like, oh, we don't know, you know, as much as everyone in the room knows, right? And the fact of the matter is like, it really just takes a lot of confidence that you got it, right? Like you're smart, you're, you know, you're in the room for a reason. Um, so don't be intimidated, right? These folks are not much more smarter than you. They're not that much, you know, like anything more than you, right? It's just a matter of just showing up and showing what the value that you bring. Um, and so I encourage people just to like walk into their true selves and, and, and take, you know, take pride and you're in the room for a reason. Um, and then step into that, right? Show your confidence that you know what you're, you know what you know, right? And, and do it. Um, and it'll save you a lot of heartaches of being all scared and, you know, anxiety ridden about like stepping up into a room of people that you're not familiar with. Like, you know, more, and you're probably better than you think you are. I love that. You're in the room for a reason, yes, <laughs> you know, definitely. more than you think of it, you are, you do. I love that. Awesome. Whitney, thank you so much for joining us today. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Anna. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks.